So now that we have seen the philosophy behind object oriented programming and we have already seen how Java classes are basically constructed, let us move on to the first interesting aspect of Java classes or object oriented programming in general which is the idea of subclasses and inheritance. So let us begin with a standard class. So suppose we want to keep track of people in an organization. So we want to keep track of personnel in an organization. So we create a class for instance called employee which will store information about each employee. So each object will denote one person in the organization. So, in this employee class as usual, we will have some private variables. So, here we have two private instance variables. One is the name which is a string and the other is the salary which we store as a double. Then as we saw last week, there will be some functions which are called implicitly when we create these objects. These are the constructors which will set up an employee with some values for the name and the salary. And then in order to update and access these private instance variables, typically we will have functions which allow us to change the name and change the salary. So set name, set salary and these accessor method which will allow us to check the name and the salary by getting the value. So we will have get name and get salary. And now we have one extra method which we will use later on. So this is a function which basically computes the bonus due to an employee. So the bonus depends on the salary. So it returns, so if you tell the method how much percent bonus is supposed to be given, this will compute the bonus as a percentage of that particular employee salary and since the salary is a local instance variable of each employee, the, the value returned by bonus will be different depending on the salary of the employee even though the percentage that it is called with may be the same. So one thing to emphasize is that there is this reference to salary here okay? and it is implicitly the salary of the object within which it is invoked. So this is we can be made explicit by saying this dot salary, right? we said that in earlier. So the, the word this refers to the current object in which the context is set. So you might remember that in Python when we wrote these methods we used to have an extra first parameter which denoted the object on which the function is supposed to be there. So that we have a name for the current object which is always part of the function call. In Java this is implicit. So we do not have an extra parameter but it is always implicit that there is a this associated with every method which is defined inside a class. So just keep this in mind. So when we say salary and there is no reference to salary inside this function it means that it must be an instance variable of this class. So now let us look at subclasses. So we have employees right? and among the employees in the organization there is a hierarchy. So there will be some employees who are managers. So we want to record this information but managers are slightly different from employees because they might have other features which employees do not have. But we do not want to rewrite the whole thing. So this is the idea of a subclass. So we would like to say that a manager is like an employee but has more features and this is given in this definition. So we say that the class manager extends employee. So this is how Java does this. In Python you use a bracket to show this subclassing. So this means that manager is like an employee and it has more and what you do is you only define that part in manager which is different or which is more than employee. So you have everything that an employee has and in this case you additionally have another private instance variable called secretary which is again a string. So this is the name of the, so every manager in this organization presumably has a personal secretary who helps that manager with their work. So we have a secretary and then corresponding to this secretary we have two new accessor and mutator methods to set the name of the secretary and to get the name of the secretary. Right? So this is at the starting point how you would define a subclass. You give the new class name and you say that it extends, so this is called the parent class. right? So you extend the parent class. So implicitly this manager inherits the rest of its structure from the employee. right? It inherits fields, it inherits methods. So it will inherit 
the earlier thing which was the name and the salary and the methods to set the name, get the name, set the salary, get the salary. Also that uh, method to compute the bonus, right? So we say technically that manager is a subclass of employee. Now the way you should think of subclass is that you have employees as a whole set, right? And in that you have a smaller set which is manager, right? So it is just like subset. So it is a special category. It's like you have all the numbers and then you have the even numbers. So the even numbers is a subset of all the numbers. It is all the numbers which are also divisible by two. So there's an extra property. So managers are employees, but they have an extra property. They also have a secretary, for example. Now, one of the interesting points that differentiates this subclass thing from what we saw, for instance, in Python is that this privacy is actually maintained across subclasses. Right? So you have this employee class above in some sense right? and below it you have this manager. So part of what the manager needs is defined here and part of it is defined locally in the manager definition. But the point is that what is defined here, the private fields of employee are not accessible to the manager. The manager cannot set the name or set the salary of the employee directly. It can only use the set salary and get salary kind of thing. Okay? So one of the things that you might want is to create these things exactly like you would in an employee at construction time. Right? So you would like a constructor for manager to be able to set these values. Now it so happens that this employee has this thing, but there may be other situations where you have private instance variables for which there is no direct way to set the value from outside. But yet it is logical that since every manager is an employee, even though it is private and hidden from the manager, there must be a way for a manager to set this. So let's look at this situation. So this is the employee and earlier we said there were some constructors. So let's assume that these are two constructors which are available for employee, right? So employee has remember two private instance variables, name and salary. So the first one takes both arguments and sets them. The second one takes only the name and puts a default salary in this case 500. So now we want to be able to set the name and the salary for a manager just like as we do here. So the way we do that is by allowing the manager constructor to call the employee constructor at construction time. And this is done through this word super which will be used in other situations also to refer to a function which is defined in the parent class. In particular in a constructor just the word super is enough to say call the constructor from the parent class. So let's look at an example. So supposing I have a manager constructor which takes three parameters name, salary and the secretary name. Now of these only secretary name can be set by the manager because that's the only private instance variable that the manager has access to. So how do you set the other ones? Well you invoke this constructor of employee. Right? So you say super ns and this implicitly calls this constructor and therefore through that the name and the salary gets set. Right? So this is the trick. So you can use super inside the child or the subclass constructor and it will call the parent constructor. So notice that we said normally that constructors you cannot call just like that. Right? You can only call a constructor when you create an object. Now it's not that the manager is creating separately an employee object, right? So you can't call the constructor by saying give me a new employee because that's already part of getting a new manager. So what you're saying is that the manager constructor has an extra privilege of being able to call the parent constructor by using the word super. So in general, a subclass has more features as we have just seen with the manager than the parent class. So it inherits the instance variables and the methods from parent class and it can define some more like it has defined in this case, a secretary name as a new private instance variable and this get secretary, set secretary are new methods to manipulate this new instance variable. So in that subset setting, every manager is an employee but not vice versa. Every even number is a number but not every number is an even number, right? So we remember that picture. So this means that we can take a variable which is declared to be of type employee and where we expect an employee, we can actually create an object of type manager. The reason this works is that everything that an employee is capable of doing, a manager is also capable of doing. So any method that you can invoke on an employee will also work for a manager. So in that sense, a manager has all the functionality of an employee and more. Right? So this is what 
we will come back to this again, but we mentioned before this is called a subtype, right. So, a subclass is a structural thing saying this class extends that class. So, that is a syntactic object, but from a more mathematical point of view, you are saying if you think about a, a data type which has certain uh, allowed values and certain manipulations allowed on it, a subtype has all the manipulations and data of the parent type and more. So, the manager is a subtype of employee and therefore, in any context where you expect a manage employee, you can also substitute a manager. But remember that it is not true the other way, right. So, we cannot take an employee and put it in place of a manager. So, if we try this, this will not work because if I create an employee object, it has no notion of a secretary name for example. So, now if I take this employee which is assigned to M. Now, the type of M as far as the declaration is, is a manager. So, every method that is allowed for manager should allow, should work for M. But if I have called M an employee, obviously, I cannot say M dot set secretary because it has no instance variable for secretary. So, this is a one sided thing, right. You can use a subtype or a subclass in place of the parent class, but not vice versa. So, let us go back to something that we saw in the context of basic data types in Java. We saw this notion of an array. We said that you will declare an array like this. So, you will give the parent type and the name of the array. So, you will say int and so this says a is an array of int and then you will actually create an array by using a new thing. So, this combines this is an initialized declaration here, right. So, you might ask if I already know that a is an array of type int, why do I again have to say int here, right. It seems to be a redundant thing because I have already declared A to be an array of type int. So, when I say I want a new array, I should be allowed to just specify the size. I should say give me a new array of size 100 and it should infer that because A is declared to be of type int that this is a new array of type int. So, now that we have seen this notion of subclasses, it becomes more interesting because we could have an array of not just int, but of any user defined type. So, we could presumably have an array of employees. So, we could declare E to be an array of employees, but now because everywhere where I expect, so everywhere I would expect E square bracket I to be an employee, but every employee could already be a manager. So, I can actually initialize an array of employees to an array of managers, okay? So, therefore, the type that I declare at runtime for the array needs to be compatible with the type that I have announced in advance in the declaration but it need not be exactly the same, it can be a subtype. So, this is the reason why you have this seemingly redundant thing here which repeats the type in the instantiation. So, to summarize a subclass extends a parent class. In Java, it is literally the word extends is what is used. So, the subclass inherits everything that the parent class has. It has all the instance variables and all the methods the parent class has. It can add more instance variables and more methods. So, we saw this manager had a secretary name and get and set secretary name. You can also change the way a method works, right. So, we saw this bonus, ok. So, we said that the employee has a bonus defined. Now, perhaps you want to say that a manager's bonus is computed definitely from employee's bonus. So, you can also do that. We will see that soon, not in this particular lecture, but in the next one. We will see that the subclass can also override methods. It is not obliged to just inherit the methods, it can make the methods perform differently. But one important thing is that the subclass cannot see the private components of the parent class. So, we saw last time we mentioned that a, an object of a one type can see the private values of another object of the same type, ok. This is quite important because otherwise you will not be able to sometimes say for example, that copy constructor we cannot do, right. We cannot copy an object unless we can look up the instance variables of one and copy it into another one, right. Another idea we will look at is equality. When are two objects the same? If all their instance values are the same, so to compare two objects, one of the objects will have to look at the instance variables of the other object. So, within a class, there is no privacy, right. Every object of one class can see all the private values of another object of the same class if it is passed to it. However, child class or a subclass does not have that same privilege, right. And the logic behind this is that typically there are many classes which are given to you as part of the definition of the language or they have been defined earlier. So, you might be working in a system in an environment 
where some classes are already defined by earlier programmers. So, it would be a mistake for the person using the subclass to go back and rewrite things in case the parent class changes, right. So, you do not want the subclass to depend on the private parts of the parent class, where the parent class is not under the control of the person who writes the subclass. So, the whole idea is the separation of concerns, right. So, the person who writes a piece of code should not be accidentally uh, kind of forced to change their code because something that they are calling changes its representation. As long as the public interface is the same, everything should work. So, from that point of view, a subclass may be written by a different developer from the parent class. So, it is logical for the subclass to not have visibility of the parent class's private variables, but we can get around that at least for constructors by using the super. So, we saw that when you construct the child class or the subclass, you can call the parent class's super constructor at the time of calling this constructor, so that you can set the private instance variables uh, directly without having to worry about it.